I had the um, the Yankees starting lineup guys for game sure two did. of their four game set with the Red Sox. Yeah, it's uh, on 880 ESPN. It's brought to you by Big sure O.T. Labor Tour is at second base, leads off. Batting second, Juan Soto playing right. He got the walk off hit yesterday. Aaron Judge in center field will hit third. Cleaning up, catcher Austin Wells. Giancarlo Stanton, the DH, will bat fifth. Batting sixth, playing third base, it's Jazz Chisholm Jr. Batting sure. seventh, Anthony Rizzo, playing first. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Anthony Volpe. Um, batting ninth, the left fielder is Alex Verdugo. I'm yeah. telling you, they're caught betwixt and between. I, I don't understand why Dominguez is up here unless he's not playing every day. Well, and he's not. So they, they don't want to completely sit down for Dugo. And that was the thought, I thought, about not bringing up Dominguez. So they bring up Dominguez, and and here he, here's for Dugo starting. So Clark Schmidt is the starter for the Yanks. That's tonight's Yankee starting lineup brought to you by Bigelow T. Bigelow T is a proud supporter of the Michael Casio and the official hot tea of the New York Yankees. Now, the remainder of... Um, this segment will give you some diamond notes brought to you by London Jewelers. Oh, please. You have the Mets against the Phillies tonight, then the Yankees against the Red Sox. Uh, Yankees second straight night win an extra inning game. They've been getting great starting pitching, and what they have now is something that I don't think that there's another team that's contending for a championship has. They have six legitimate starting pitchers. Six. They're going to have to make a decision at some point. Um, they took Nestor Cortez out of the rotation Last week, they put him back in yesterday, pitched very well. Clark Schmidt tonight. Are they going to go with six men again? Who's going to be taken out this time? So they're in good shape for the playoffs. If you look at the, the what the Dodgers are doing, the Dodgers don't have pitching. Jack Flaherty, they got, they got him at the trade deadline. He's going to start game one of their postseason. Everybody's hurt. The Mets are in pretty decent shape when it comes to pitching, too. They might get back Senga. They might, yeah. So I think the Yankees right now have things going on. They're full two games ahead of the Orioles, who mm. were uh, idle yesterday. They played well yesterday. Still not a lot of hitting, but that's the. But Soto got that big hit to drive in birdie, and they win a game two to one in extra innings. That's the thing that would be concerning to me, just that, that they're not hitting. Um, but you're winning games. Mets are going through the same thing. We'll see if that six-run ninth they had in Toronto on Thursday or, or Wednesday gets them going against Philadelphia this weekend. But, you know, both teams winning games, but both teams not really hitting. Was it 16 straight games now, judge without a home run? That's, That's a, a career uh, high. A career high. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you find a ways to win, which is great, and the pitching has been terrific, and that's how you win in the postseason with great pitching. But both the Mets and the Yankees, for the, the, the feel-good that they're going through, both I, I, I think you'd like to see them hit a little. The Yankees-Red Sox tonight, and Aaron Boone just announced that Marcus Stroman's next start will be skipped. No. Uh -oh. So he's going to be in the bullpen as an option for Sunday. Oh. So they've got six starters, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, which is great. But you're always going to tick somebody off. So one start, Cortez was skipped. Now Stroman is skipped. There's going to be another start. Will they go with six or will they skip somebody else? The one guy they're not going to skip is Garrett Cole. Yeah. But you wonder if you're one of the skippies, does that mean that you're not going to be pitching in the postseason in terms of starting? I would think. Wouldn't you? <sighs> Well, the, a, they're, they're, if the Yankees win the division, their first series will be the ALDS, which is a best of five. You only need three pitchers. If, if, if it's me, the three pitchers are Cole, Heal, and, um, and Rodon. After that, everybody else, you know, take your place in the bullpen and we'll use you when we can. Yeah. Now, so what you're saying is this is not just an audition for the bullpen. It's also an addition to who's going to be the possible fourth starter. Right, or third starter. Well, I mean, if you think about it, 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 they're only going to need three. And then when they go, if they go to the ALCS, they'll need four because, you know, that, that fifth game or the fourth game. But they're going to be pe – there's three people that are going to be chapped. So I, I, I always say this to everybody. Oh, it's mm -hmm. a good problem. It's still a problem. You've got, a problem. you've got to massage egos. Um, you know, remember, the Yankees did not acquire Marcus Stroman from the Blue Jays. Because Brian Cashman came right out and said, you know, he wouldn't start in the playoffs for us. Why would we want him? And is he not going to start in the playoffs this time? How will he handle it? He didn't handle it well last time, but everything has been patched up. 
He's been he's been really good for the Yankees. He's been everything that you could have possibly wanted. But mm -hmm. how do you tell guys that have been successful and help the team, you know, get a playoff spot that they're not going to start in the postseason, which are the biggest games of the year? That's going to be interesting. Well, but you want to just get get it right. You don't want to have somebody that can do well not pitch, and then have somebody that you don't that ends up not being good, getting a chance to pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, Rodon is is supposed to be a star, but there, he's it's, he's been hit or miss. For sure. I don't think you have to worry about feelings, Michael. You're going out there trying to win a championship. Yep. No, no, you don't have to worry about their feelings, but you do have to right. manage them. No, you got to manage them, and you got to manage left field, it looks like. And Domingo, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of juggling. These, they're making the playoffs, and obviously the division is up for grabs where they got a two game lead now with what, 15 to play. Mm -hmm. But these 15 games are also going to be an evaluation offensively, defensively, pitching. I, I was really impressed with Canely last night. I thought Smoltz really broke it down as far as if he could just be a little bit more effective with this fastball. He could be the miss the bat stuff that, a, that, that you could use a closer. If he could just be a little bit more reliant on the fastball. I thought Smoltz, I, I, I'm sure you watched him, Michael, mm -hmm. really broke his performance down very well for all those yo-yos that he thinks he talks too much. I think Canely should be given a shot. He might. I, th I think they're probably leaning more toward Luke Weaver because Weaver throws like 97, and he also has swing and miss stuff. But Kainley's going to pitch important innings, Don. And, you know, Aaron Boone, you know, I know you have his pick, you know, for the Monday nighter. He's got some cubes, man. To bring in uh, Clay Holmes in that spot last night after he had failed and blown the lead against uh, Kansas City, to bring him in that spot. And, and, you know, Yankee fans, listen, I love you. That <laughs> your first reaction is to boo the guy, not boo Boone, but to boo, you know, Holmes. And he goes out and he pitches lights out, and then you cheer him. Players remember, man. He said the right well, thing afterward. He said something like, uh, "You know, it's great pitching here. You know, when you pitch well, they're, they're going to reward you." But they don't forget that stuff. You, you think you're all being tough, guys? Good, good for but, you. And hey, listen, you want to boo somebody when they don't perform? Great. But you're going to boo him before he even gets on the mound just because of what, past performance? But, but honestly, what could Clay Holmes possibly expect the reaction was going to be? Uh, how about nothing? Oh, how about wait till he fails again and then boo him but, off the mound? But but the last time you saw him, he failed. He lost his closer spot. I mean, I just uh, – is it right? No. Does it make sense for fans to do that? No. But he should not have been surprised. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised either. It's just now the way here. That's it. That's the way. I'm not fighting it. I'm, you have every right to boo uh, whenever you want. Michael. I'm just saying the wisdom of it, probably not the best. It probably doesn't elicit the best performance. Now, yesterday, well, he pitched well. That's why I, I say that it, it's kind of lazy reporting to, to ask these players about it all the time because it's become clearly a thing that a player has to understand when he comes to New York. Michael, I'm not going to get mad at any Giant fan that booed the Giants' performance on Sunday. But to wait an hour after the game, hang out by the players' parking lot just to destroy Daniel Jones leaving, get a life, man. That, that's now, now you're being ridiculous, right? That you pay was... good money, you sit there, you pay your PSLs, you pay your $13 for a beer. You know what? You have the right to boo a poor performance on the field. But once you leave hanging around just to boo the guy, dude, get a job, get a life, get a girl. That's just so stupid. Honestly, what are you accomplishing there? It's such a weird, Don, and, and also, he's your quarterback next week. Right. right? This is the this is the tone you want to set, and also show me something you hack a doodle doos. Are you really if he if he throws for four fifty and five TDs tomorrow? And it, again, it's the Commanders, so it's on the table. Are, are you going to call him you know Danny Pennies then? It's so funny. That, well, well, Peter, it, it happened last night. They boo Holmes when he comes in. He pitches really well, and then they cheered him. Oh, all is forgiven. Oh. But but we also have to realize there are not. <laughs> For the most part, Yankee fans, Giant fans, Ranger fans, Matt fans. Yeah, there's people that root for the, the the people that were outside booing Daniel Jones were probably at the game last night booing Holmes. I mean, it's you have multiple teams that you root for here, so it's it's something that has just been in the DNA of New York forever, forever. It's nothing new. They booed Mickey Mantle. They booed Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera. It's just it is just crazy. So I'm sorry. No offense to Clay Holmes, but you know what? You're going to get booed. If all the people I just listed can get booed, he certainly can get booed. But at some point, you're right, Michael. What are you What are you accomplishing? And I, I don't what? mind when, when I don't even mind when they boo when they don't perform well. I don't mind it. You're paying big money. You want to see the performance. They don't. But you're punishing him. 
when he comes yeah, into a game no, to boo him? You, you, Michael, you take a look. Listen, I know that we look at social media as the minority of fans, and I think for the most part that's the case, but it also could be an indicator of what a lot of fans are thinking. Mm -hmm. I think punish is the right word. I think these fans... When they boo someone, they, they want to hurt them. They want them to feel bad. They want to punish them for, for the negative play. Do you really think Daniel Jones wants to play poorly? Believe me, as bad as you feel, he feels twice as bad. And don't throw me I, – I hear hosts say this too. Well, he's making $40 million a year. I get it. Do you think that makes it hurt less that he can't do his job? We just talked about with Tua how it's in their DNA. They are football players. They are baseball players. This is not their job. This is who they are. So you think all the money is going to make them feel good for going out there and failing at what they're supposed to do? And booing him is going to make them play better? Or make them realize that they are playing poorly? Believe me, Daniel Jones knows he's stunk. Clay Holmes knows he's stunk. He doesn't need a reminder. But I'll give the fans a little bit of a break, but sometimes they take it way too far, man. And it does become a punishment. I'd like to put something out here, by the way, guys. I, I, this, I need this to be remembered. Mm -hmm. When? Are, have you, you guys can... You've been listening all week to how I've been discussing Sunday's game, right? Mm -hmm. At any point, have I said anything... That should necessitate anyone coming after me on Monday. Zero. Zero. Tessa, I don't want to hear from you on Monday if the Giants win. I have not said that the Commanders are going to win. In fact, all I've stated was it is ripe for a Giants bounce back game because the, the Commander defense was putrid. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you're a little scared of Tessa is what you're saying. I just don't feel like it. Like, I'll be so mad if we lose on Sunday. I don't also need to be ridiculed Monday when I'm not saying we're going to win. I, in past years, I've said, we've got your number. Blah. I, I'm in a place right now, guys. I just want to see if my quarterback develops into being a guy. I, I, I hope we win. That'll be great. But, like, to, to, when, you, when your defense cannot stop anyone... How do you expect to go into a game and win? Frankly, it's the same concern if, I have, if I'm a Jets fan this week. I love you. Excuse point. me? What was that? Exactly. I heard music. Hey, it's, I know. it's time for Inside <laughs> the Numbers, brought to you by Eisner Ramper. Aaron Judge has now gone 16 straight games without a home run. That's ah, the longest ah. streak of his career. And tied for the fourth longest drought all time by a player who hit 50 home runs in that season. It's also mm. the longest drought all time by a player after reaching the 50 home run mark. That's odd. That's Inside the Numbers brought to you by mm. Eisner Amper, a leading business advisory firm helping clients transform their companies, build capital, innovate processes, and mitigate risk. Mm. Make Eisner Amper part of your solution. Learn more at EisnerAmper.com slash solution. So who are the four guys? Because it's, it's not that many players in the grand scheme of things that have hit 50 home runs. Well, you've got um, McGuire. You've got um, Brady Anderson. Brady, Brady Anderson. Anderson. You, you've Fielder. got uh, Sammy Sosa. Yep. Mr. Bonds, Mr. Sosa. Fielder. Um, Mr. Fielder. George Foster did it George one year. Foster one year. Mm, interesting. Not a ton. No. It's it's, it's a, an exclusive club, and he's in it twice. Uh, uh, wait, who, who, who do we start with? Stanton? No. Oh, Judge. Stan's in there. Yes, no, Stan. Yeah, Stan Stan's 59. there too. Yeah, Stan's there for that one year. We're still paying for that year. Um, what I'm saying is the fourth player to have this long of a streak. Not, not that big a deal. And there's not that many guys that have done it. But think about it, though. He's he's got the longest streak after getting to 50. And I thought he hit the ball very well last night. He's just not getting lift right now, but he hit the ball really well. So maybe that's a portent of things to come. Well, he's gonna he's gonna break through. At some point, I would think he's not gonna go for. And how many at bats are we up to? Probably mid fifties, right? Fifty five, fifty six. Fifteen games left for. You know, no, I mean, how many w without the home run? It's sixteen games, but it's like what fifty five, fifty six. Yeah, bats? something like that. Four bats a game, sure. Not that, it just, but the thing that's crazy, but it's, it, it, it's not even that crazy. You go that long without a home run. How hot he was before the cold streak. Right. You couldn't get him out. That's that's baseball, Susan. So nine games remaining for the Yankees. I think you look at that and go, you know what? They give you six and three, you're okay. The Orioles continue to stumble, and then you finish the season with a, a six-game homestand, three against the Orioles, and then three against the Pirates. Now for the Mets, they mm. start a three-game set against the Pirates, 
And then they will go to Washington, or they'll, they'll host Washington for three. I, I said it all wrong. The Mets will start a three-game series in Philly tonight. Right. Then three at home against the Nationals, four at home against the Phillies. That's ten games, Don. Give me a number. What do they have to go? Ten games. I, I think you've, if, if you really, hmm. That's tough. It's hard, right? Six and four. I think I might take six and four. I think obviously uh, you want to go seven and three, but I think yeah. they could survive with six and four. Yeah, I think they could survive because again, you've got three teams in play here, right? So um, somebody else may stumble. It's not just about the Braves, um, and you know, we'll see what they can do. I think the Braves, Michael, are, are home against the Dodgers. So listen, a, a t- tough series for both, and and the tough matchup tonight with Quintana on the mound. Uh, versus Nola, but they haven't announced the starter for tomorrow's game for Philadelphia, and Severino has been good. And then Peterson coming off his worst outing in a while, but overall he's been terrific going up against Sanchez. So I I think the pitching matchups kind of favor the Mets, even though the games are in Philadelphia. And then you just got you take three out of four from Washington at home, and then you see what... and to see what what, I guess we'll see what Philadelphia is going to need, Michael, by the time we get to next Thursday. Because Philadelphia's got an eight-game lead on the Mets and and the uh, and nine games on the Braves, so they're, they're not they're not feeling it as far as the division's concerned. And as far as the one seed, they they still have something to play for because uh, they only've got a one-game lead on on the Dodgers for the best record in baseball, uh, best record in the America in the National League. So there is a possibility that they'll have the division wrapped up, but still need something to play for. But that still can benefit the Mets because the game's not going to be nearly as important for Philly as it will be for the Mets once they get to next week. But six and four, seven and three, I think I, I'd skip to work. I, I think asking for more than seven, if they go better than seven and three, Michael, then they're in amazing shape. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, Philadelphia is great. So that's so seven games. So they, let's just break it down to those seven. What do they think? What Four and three, right? Yeah, I, I think four and three is fair, don't you? Well, they split the four then at home and then they take two but, out of three. It's, it's going to be hard to go four and three. I, I, but I, 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 don't, I, I don't, if the Mets take two out of three in Philly, then I wouldn't want to take that. Right. But you know, if you lose, if you lose, and you two can't of the games trip up weekend, on the Nationals, you can't trip up on the Nationals. Well, they're going to have to really take care of business against Philly because that's that's the easiest series that they have left, and those games are at home, and and Washington has nothing to play for. San Diego is in San Francisco now. These two teams met last week in San Diego, and the Giants took two out of three. Now the Giants are under 500, but not an easy series for the Padres. I would say, and Arizona's home for Milwaukee. So, uh, everybody, I, I think that there, as long as you don't bury yourself by just losing every day, I, I think if the if the Mets went six and if the Mets even if they lost two out of three in Philadelphia, I wouldn't say the sky's falling. Considering the Braves are taking on the Dodgers, Padres in San Francisco, and the Diamondbacks taking on uh, Milwaukee, I, th- I think you could survive that. And going quickly to uh, the American League again, the Yankees obviously trying to hold off the Orioles. They had that three game series at the stadium uh, in another week. Uh, but this weekend, the Orioles are playing the Tigers, and you can't say that's a gimme anymore. The Tigers are 75 and 72 and very much in the wild card hunt. So that those yeah. games are in Detroit, and Oakland has, uh, the Orioles have been playing very, very poorly. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do in that three game set. So the Yankees could take care of business against the Red Sox, who are also in the wild card hunt. Well, then maybe they gain more. Maybe they come out of the weekend three games up, four games up, and then you can take a little bit of a deep breath. I tell you what, that was a tough loss for the Tigers last night. They've got their best pitcher on the mound. You're home against the Rockies, and you lose. So I, I don't know what Detroit is, Michael. I know they're, I know they're alive, but I, I, I don't know. 75 That's and 72. A, right now, I, they are four games in the loss column behind the Twins. We can't have the third wild the card spot. You can't have your best pitcher on the mound and lose to the Rockies at home. That's a tough loss. Ken in Freeport. Ken. All right, good evening, Mike and guys. Hello. Uh, this question is directed, directed basically to Mike. Mike, you've done games with David Cohn, Paul O'Neill, and Joe Girardi. Mm-hmm. And as an analyst, they all have the same opinion about what's wrong with Judge and what's wrong with uh, Volpe. And it don't seem to resonate with any of the coaching staff or whatever. You, Volpe can't leave eight guys on base hanging. And I have a 
no doubt judge will come out of it. But they all say judge's hip is coming out and his shoulder's dropping. What's your opinion? Well, I mean, w w you think the analysts should tell the Yankees that? Is that what you're saying? Well, well let, let, I mean, let's put it this way, Ken. Everything that's said on the Yes Network, everything is watched and monitored by the Yankees. They, they hear it all. If they think there's anything legitimate to what Paul and David or Joe and, and Jeff and John are saying and Todd, then they'll put it into effect. It's not like I have to go down and tell them. This is what Paul O'Neill said. Paul talks to players. He's at the batting cage every day. The Yankees have their own thoughts on how to deal with their players. They're not going to take the yeah. TV analyst uh, As... um, you know, opinions and put them in the practice. They're just not. As great as Paul O'Neill and David Cohn are, I'm sure it would not be received well if they started going to Aaron Boone saying, you should do this. And it would be received even more poorly, Don, if they went up to said player and told them what they thought. Because then you're superseding the coaches. They don't right. want that. I, I, would, I, would, I would actually think that they would, somebody would take them aside and, and say, stop doing that. It could be. I mean, I'm it, not saying it never happened, but it and, could be. But here's the thing. I don't think Paul O'Neill, David Cohn would ever do that unless a player came to them and asked for advice. And if a player came to them and asked for advice because Paul and David know the, the rule of the land, they would go and uh, approve it with, the, yeah. with Boone or Cashman. Would, everybody's got to know their role. Even former great Yankees, championship Yankees, still, it's not, that's not good form. I'm telling you. Now, I and give out advice to the receiver. players all the time. I don't. I don't. I don't even. That's no I, problem. You've yeah. been there forever. I don't you know even. I don't even ask permission. I'll go. I think you're, you know, dropping your hands a little bit. They look at me and they walk away.